What's up everybody, Derek here, and today we are gonna talk about a situation that plagues us all when we buy a boat, and that is buying a boat without a title. Yeah, it's probably happened to a lot of us or you've talked to somebody that has had it happen to them, and it's a common thing that happens, and then you're stuck trying to figure out what to do. And for me personally, I had to learn this the hard way. So, you bought a boat, and it has no title well now you're finding out watching this video if you are that that's a problem yeah so trying to get a registration for your boat unless you're a state that does not require the title to get a registration then you got it easy but a lot of states require a title of ownership to get a registration and we all know what happens if you go meet a game warden you're out fishing on anything like even a creek that's behind me creek river lake anything that is working a i believe it is just a trolling motor any motorized vessel and i believe it's under 18 feet for most states so if that is you yeah you're gonna be putting in some work to try to locate an owner you're gonna have to figure out if the boat was stolen and now you just bought a stolen boat that has been turned in for being stolen. So now it's hot in your possession and all you've got is a bill of sale that somebody made up a name for unless you looked at their driver's license or got some kind of, you know, certification from them. So what do you do? Well, now you're seeing where this problem lies. You just spent money to buy a boat that you basically can't go fishing on. That's a huge problem. So what can you do now? If you go and you go to a police station, a lot of times they'll run a data check. Sometimes you can call the your state's game and fish department and they will actually run vent hall ID numbers, an HIN, or they will actually research the database upon the registration to see if it comes up as the owner or maybe even the person who sold you over that bill of sale. They could run their name and find out if they have any ownership of this particular boat. Now, all of those things, if it comes up stolen, yeah, that's kind of one of those loopholes where uh, you're going to have to go talk to somebody with the game and fish. But if you got a don't have a title and you're trying to get that thing registered and all you got is a bill of sale, there are some things that you can do. Now, if it's not stolen, there's always the abandoned boat turn in that you can basically, let's say you were out on a river and you found a boat, you're wanting to, you know, make it yours well you basically turn it into the state let them know what you've got in your possession um i don't i don't know sometimes different states do different things but you let them know it's in your possession you found this boat it was abandoned they turn it in a lot of times there's a waiting period for texas it's six months that i know of in that six months of time it gets put on their website with the hall id and the description of what the boat is and if nobody claims it and shows ownership of title for that particular boat it becomes yours the state times it turns it over and you get an abandoned boat title now let's say you can't do that or there's some issues with that and you don't want to wait. There is something that is called the Vermont loophole. Now there's also a Montana loophole, but this one is particularly to Vermont. And I did some deep research into this and this is actually coming a lot of times from the classic car market. So think you bought a farmer's old 1960 picked up out in the back of a field, right? Well, you want to register that thing, but you know, the farmer's gone. Who owns it? You know, nobody owns it. So you've got a bill of sale from the person that maybe bought the property and then sold it to you. So how do you get to register a vehicle that you can find nobody for? And that's the same with boats. Maybe you have to go track ownership of somebody that did have previous ownership if it wasn't hot or stolen. That's another way of going about it and trying to, trying to get a title. And then you gotta track down the owner back and back and back and back. But in this case, as the classic truck we're describing here, how do you get that? Well, Vermont has a little loophole built into their system that is allowing registration as a non-resident, means you don't live in the state or plan to live in the state, you can register your vehicle to that state without even living in it. And they make a ton of taxes off of this. 
It's not really expensive, but so many people do it and they get titles very quickly because what happens is they take that, that bill of sale or the proof of, of somebody selling it to you or whatnot. You take it, turn in all the proper paperwork that Vermont is gonna ask for, send it to them and they will register your boat, your classic car, your four wheeler, whatever it is that you're trying to register to you. So what you do is you get that registration from Vermont, you take it to your Game and Fish or DMV or whoever it is within your state and you take it to them because you've got a registration with your name. So what they do is they make a new title with that registration and assign that back to you. And that is the only way in a lot of cases, which it can be so tough with titles and registration, all that stuff to get ownership of a boat or anything else. But that's, that's about all you can really do. Otherwise you're going to turn it in as abandoned or you're going to keep it in your possession. And if you don't do anything, it's just going to sit there and rot. Cause you're not going to be able to go fishing. You can go fishing, but you run in and miss your old game warden. You're going to get yourself a little ticket and it's just going to keep ongoing and it's going to get marked on your, I guess, fishing docket or your outdoors docket or Whatever the docket is, I know for hunting, there's so many points that can be taken away for you in a state if you do illegal activities. And that, I guess that, could, I don't know if that's considered an illegal activity, which it is, and you get a fine, but I don't know if it dockets you from a point system that some states use. But anyways, it's risky if you don't have a registration on a boat. And those are some of the ways that I found out through research and oh, just a ton of research of finding out how to actually get something registered in your state. But anyways, guys, I hope that helps. And I hope you guys can get your, your titles for your boats or four wheelers or cars or whatever it might be, because it is a serious problem and it could be kind of annoying. Say you spent five, 10 grand on just a used boat you found on Facebook marketplace. Well, that thing's going to be sitting in your backyard. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next one.